One of the things that's always confused me as I teach history and I converse in social media and in personal relationships is why in this country we insist on blaming the United States, blaming the American people for the sins that we've committed over the centuries. But we forgive the perpetrators, the people who are most responsible for those very sins. Imagine for a moment that you're living in Germany right now, 2021, Germany. You're a German. And let's, for the sake of argument, say that the German government has allowed the National Socialist Party to reform, the National Socialist uh, German Workers' Party, Nazis, which are outlawed. But imagine that they're allowed to reform, to be legal, to run candidates for elections. And imagine that they're gathering all these adherents who are, many of them are young, college professors among them, coming to the party. And you know many of these people. And you ask them, why would you want to belong to the Nazi party, given the history of what was done under Nazi control? I mean, the Holocaust, rounding up people on the left, wiping out gypsies, mentally and physically infirm, killing millions of Russian prisoners of war, butchering Poles, wiping out the Polish intelligentsia. You go on and on and on, the sins of Gestapo and, and, and uh, medical experiments, all the terrible things the Nazis did. And they say, well, you know, we're not the same party anymore. We actually like Jews now. We're not anti-Semites. In fact, the treasurer, we made the treasurer of the party, the finance head, is a Jew. See how much we love Jews? We're not anti-Semites anymore. And in fact, one of our undersecretaries is a gypsy. And we've got a physically infirm person who works over here. And we have somebody with Down syndrome who is my chief assistant. We're a revamped party. Forget, you know, we're not the party of the past. We're not your father's Nazi party. Oh, okay, okay, I get it. Well, then who's responsible for the Holocaust, if not you guys? Oh, that's, that's Germany and the German people are responsible for the Holocaust. That's who's responsible, not us. We're different today. We're not responsible. But Germany has a responsibility for what happened during the Holocaust, but not us. We've reformed. We moved on. Would you buy that? I mean, would you buy that argument? Would you go, oh, yeah, okay, I get it. The Nazis are good. They're progressive. They're going to lead Germany to a new future with their Jewish finance minister and their, you know, undersecretary who's a gypsy. And they've got a dwarf who works over here. And uh, this person over here who's uh, uh, mentally and physically infirm. Yeah, that, that, I, I get it now. And everything that went wrong during the 30s and 40s is the fault of Germany and the German people, but not the National Socialist Party. No, no, yeah, okay, I got that. Now, maybe it's just me, but I wouldn't buy that for a second. But that is exactly the position we're in in the United States today. That's exactly what's going on. I've taught American history for four decades almost. I, despite claims that you know, people on the right just want to ignore American history, the blemishes and all that, I don't do that. I have six major themes when I talk about U.S. history. Slavery and race is one of them. I never ignore slavery. I don't ignore the Indian Removal Act. I don't ignore rounding up Japanese. I don't ignore segregation or any of those things. I talk about all of that. You know, I think America is a great country. It's the greatest country the world has ever seen. But no country is perfect. 
anything made by human beings who are by definition imperfect, finite, is going to be itself finite and imperfect. What you're talking about here is, you know, related to what? I mean, I am a sinner. Adolf Hitler was a sinner. Does that mean I'm no better than Hitler? You know, I, I haven't, I haven't killed anybody that I know of. I was accused once of killing somebody, but that's that's a whole other story. Maybe I'll, I'll explain it one day. Uh, yes, I'm an accused killer. But setting that aside, and it's not true anyway, it was nonsense. But you know, how can you say, well, you're a sinner, Hitler's a sinner, there's no difference between the two of you. Everything is relevant, and that's the way it is with countries. Is the United States imperfect? Yes. Is it less imperfect than other countries in the world? I would argue that it is. You know, it's not as if we invented slavery. It's not as if we had some sort of monopoly on slavery. It's not as if no other country in the world has eliminated indigenous people. All these things have happened all over the place throughout history. The question is, are we getting better? And have we done less of it than other countries? And I would argue that we have. But if you look at the sins we have committed since the formation of the government, not in 1619, in 1776, if you look at our sins, which party was in control when most of those sins were committed? If you look at the parties, the, the Federalists, the Whigs, the Republicans, and the Democrats, which party is most responsible for the continuation of slavery? Which party fought to protect the institution of slavery? Which party tore this country apart in a civil war in an effort to protect the institution of slavery? What party was it? Hmm. Democrats. The Democratic Party was the party that supported slavery. If they had had their way, we'd still have slavery, I guess, until they had changed their mind, whenever that was going to happen. Indian Removal Act, Jackson, you know, move all the Indians from east of the Mississippi to west of the Mississippi. Horrible policy. They just wanted land. They were stealing these people lands. And it's, there's no clearer evidence of that than what they did to the Cherokee, who had westernized, who had Christianized, who had, you know, adopted Western dress, schooling, education, all the rest. And they still got shoved off their land. Trail of tears. Thousands died. Who did that? So you got slavery. You got that. It's the third big blemish we have in our soul. You know, when I went to Catholic school, we had a milk bottle and you had little dark spots in the, the white milk bottle. Or other sin. You know, who rounded up the Japanese in World War II and put them in concentration camps? Was that Republicans? No, it was a Roosevelt administration. Franklin Roosevelt, leading Democrat. Other racial policies. Who supported segregation into the 1960s? Democrats. Who supported separate but equal? Democrats. Who supported Jim Crow laws? Democrats. Who were comprised of a membership of a KKK, the Ku Klux Klan? Democrats. I mean, I'm old enough to remember Robert Byrd of West Virginia, former Klansman, leading the Senate. A Democrat. Senator. Find pictures of him and Biden. Him and Manchin. Him and any number of people. Esteemed senator, former Klansman. Can you remember? Could you imagine if, if uh, the turtle, our current uh, Senate Majority Leader, at least for a little while longer, was a former Klansman? Can you imagine the uproar over that? But they had one. That was okay. Everything about segregation and Jim Crow was all supported by the Democrats. Uh, that racist movie, Birth of a Nation, based on a book called The Klansman, 
<laughs> you know, gee, I wonder what that's about. Who let it premiere or had a, a, a showing of it in the White House itself? Woodrow Wilson, who resegregated the federal workforce. Woodrow Wilson, a Democrat. Tuskegee, Tuskegee uh, syphilis experiment. Democrats. I could go on. You look at all the horrible things that we've done in this country, and they were all the work of Democrats, or mostly all, virtually all, of Democrats. And yet, in this country, what do we do? We forgive the Democrats. We condemn the country. We condemn the rest of us. Democrats aren't responsible for slavery. I'm responsible for slavery. My family wasn't even here. I'm a Republican. They didn't get here till the end of the century. They had nothing to do with slavery. But I'm responsible. I should pay reparations. And Democrats are absolved of their sins. Now, I'm not saying we shouldn't forgive Democrats for their sins. I'm not saying we should hold Democrats who are currently Democrats responsible for the sins of their party forefathers. That's not what that's not my argument. My argument is if we we allow them to be forgiven, we allow the party to be forgiven, why can't we forgive the country? Why do we continue to beat ourselves as flagellants, you know, whipping ourselves over the back over slavery and any number of other things that we've done? And we have done them, and they are sins. They were sins. They are sins. And we need to teach about that. But we won't forgive the country for its sins. But we forgive the Democrat Party for its sins. And I don't get it. I'm not prepared to forgive the Nazis, but not forgive Germany for the Holocaust. That makes no sense in the world. Who should be more responsible for the Holocaust? People who claim today that they're Nazis or some left-wing German socialist? If you live in the United States, it would be the left-wing German socialist is more responsible than the actual member of a Nazi party. That's where we're at in this country. The people responsible for slavery are Democrats. They're adherents to a party that supported slavery. They're adherents to a party that protected slavery. They're adherents to a party that broke this country in two over the issue of slavery. And when they lost that war and they were treated nicely by Grant at the surrender at Appomattox, what did they do? <laughs> they exploited that compassion with you know Jim Crow and segregation and all the other horrible things they did to blacks, terrorism, the Klan, lynching. They were all Democrats. And it's not like it's it's this is old history. This was going on into the 1960s. You know, when I was 10 years old, the Klan was still around. They were still lynching people. They were still practicing and pushing segregation. They were still trying to keep blacks out of the schools. They were doing all those things in my life. And they were all Democrats. But today they're forgiven and the country's condemned and I'm condemned along with it. And to me, this is pure, total bullcrap. I had a, history, a teacher back in high school, he's called Bull Dinghy. We'll call it that, Bull Dinghy. It's nonsense. And we fall for it. The American people have fallen for it. Blame the country, forgive the responsible people. That's nonsense. That's asinine. That's about as ass backwards as you can get. But that's the current state of American politics. Let me know what you think in a comment. Like the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, share the video with your friends. Hit the notification button so you know when I post new videos. And until the next time, keep fighting. And don't forgive.